All right, then, welcome to this episode of After the Click Photography Podcast with me, Andy Gray, your host. Uh, this week is going to be a little bit different. I know I usually look at uh, the more abstract types of photography and explore those, or that's what the premise was to start this podcast. But this week, we are speaking to a good friend of mine, um, a food photographer based out over the Atlantic there in sunny, sunny Florida, my good friend, Suzanne Clemens. So just briefly before we jump into that, remember to subscribe to this podcast wherever you can find us, mainly Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Right then, without further ado, let's get to my conversation with Suzanne right now. All right then. Well, welcome, Suzanne. Um, it's been a, it's been a while. I was gonna I was gonna say in my intro that we've kind of known each other for about ten years now through the wonders of the crazy. internet. The yes. Under- and uh, that the, another failed Google product uh, the way, that's gone by the wayside. Hurrah for failed Google. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we oh, we are those... all prob- we are all probably victims of them somewhere along the line. Um, but yes. yeah, in, in the in these current days of everybody existing online and and working online, then we kind of started that a long time ago before Zoom was a thing. Skype, just saying. Skype was just one of them weird things that the kids were using. Probably ICQ was still on the go then. Um, oh my god! But uh, you know, we, we almost became like work colleagues because we'd all sit there in like our own little virtual office doing our own little self-employed yeah. things. You, me, and several other of the crew, and we a lot of the time we'd sit there in bloody silence, and just <laughs> you could hear pen t- keyboards tapping and pen scribbling. Uh, wonderful halcyon days of 2011 or whatever it was. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, it was amazing times. though. I got to meet so many amazing people through that, and got to meet a lot of them in person too. Well, yeah, because you're you're one of the few from the crew that have actually gotten around and and uh, visited our little batch of people yeah because yes. even you even went, ended up down in australia to see i did i got did you to see, see lee, lee did you yeah mm-hmm. yeah lee i didn't get over to uh perth or anything so i didn't get to see paul but yeah maybe next time yeah yeah, yeah. it's well yeah no yeah i mean you certainly did you certainly did the rounds um yeah. so anyways apart from that little introduction in your in your words give us a little bit of background on Suzanne Clements. Oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's say it's been a long journey. <laughs> not too um, long because you you're about my age so it's not that long a journey. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very like kind of journey. <laughs> you know, like you you're you go to school and you have some idea of what you're going to be when you grow up and then you're like, wait, how am I like a food photographer? <laughs> <laughs> When I went to school, I didn't even know that that was a thing, let alone, you know, I didn't actually enjoy the the process of photography. (laughs) So um, anyway, so I went to school for art. I was going to be a painter and exhibit and survive off uh, art opening food and, you know, because it's free and, um, you know, (laughs) and wine and live in a crummy apartment filled with bugs or something in New York City or some nonsense. That was like my my dream. And then. I graduated and had to pay off my student loans. So I went into graphic design and um, and then uh, bounced around a few ways that way. Did a lot of like pre-press and digital design, web design, stuff like that. E-learning, all, you know, if it happened online, it, you, you know, did, it was you're, you're, I was, was, did, did a lot of the online stuff, it was, was that because it was comfortable to you? Because I'm thinking from my side of things, I did a lot of online stuff because well, for one way, there's where I, where I live is fairly inaccessible to a point. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you're well out of the way of everything, but online just makes sense. Because yeah, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I'm, fa- I'm fairly, an- well, not antisocial, but yeah, exactly. Antisocial, even. Maybe, uh-huh. let's let it, you know. Glover, get, maybe? Get, get an impression of the puns that used to come around. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, no, for me, I think I was just always like inherently sort of nerdy. So like when I was in high school, I was um, on BBS, which is like you dial into somebody else's computer and you're like typing on this like bulletin board system and then you log off through your crappy little modem. And then um, 
I didn't do anything like really techy at university, but then after I tried to, or I probably did, I don't know, so long ago, like teach myself Perl and stuff like that. So I taught myself some programming. I always knew how to do um, website design shortly, either at the end of college or after just like for fun, cause nerd. (laughs) And then um, I did pre-press predominantly like right out of college right so um i learned like all like the print production stuff not like i wasn't a pressman but i understood like how it worked and what made them angry and how not to make them angry at you um and then when i moved up to michigan i landed a job at an e-learning company and so that's where i probably dove in i was talking earlier before we hit record i guess about like doing flash and stuff like that Mm. flash animation and things like that so i always really liked that what I really wanted to do was actually become an animator. Right. And so I always really thought that was kind of a cool way to kind of get into it without having to get too um, regimented about it. Cause like true animators, like really back in the day, at least had to be able to draw like the same thing consistently and beautifully. Yeah. And I was like, that's not me. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, I can almost, I can almost see that coming through in, in some of your current work. I mean, skipping ahead a little bit here, but yeah. uh, just looking through your uh, your, your current uh, portfolio of work, there's I'm some, finally an animator. <laughs> there's 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 some like obvious stuff that's what gifs or, or gifs or whatever yeah. you call. Uh, so yeah. you're you're blending in the, the the product and the food photography, and you're making them move as well. So so I there's, there's stop there's motion. That. Yeah. 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 I finally did it. I just kind of came about it a weird way. <laughs> yeah, because actually, <laughs> when I was in high school, I tried to apply to Sheridan College of Design, which is up in Ontario, Canada, um, but they wouldn't take me. <laughs> right. Totally fine. I'm not mad about not it. Not disappointed at all. Yeah, I'm happy with where I am, but because <laughs> like um, the U.S. has 12 grades, and at least at the time, I think they might still. Canada had 13, and they were like, "Yeah, no, you need another year of school." And I was like, "But like, I can't get that." <laughs> So like, I'm just going to float or like go to university somewhere down here for a year. It was like, I just couldn't, once I got like into the school that I went to, there was no leaving. I just, I loved it. So I wasn't going to, you know, pop back up to Canada. I was like, forget it. (laughs) Bye Canada. I love you, but we're done. (laughs) I've crossed crossed the border. There is no turning back now. I thought I would go back, but you guys were like, no. And I was like, all right, fine. So now I'm in Florida. (laughs) But the weather's better. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No, no regrets. It's so warm. I'm getting vitamin D, I think, as I sit here right now. So sorry. Yeah, some, <laughs> some of us only get about two months worth of vitamin D every, every year. And that's it. So I grew up in Buffalo. It was, yeah. And then we lived in <laughs> Michigan, which is the same. Like, yeah. I, I used, people used to complain about how like gloomy it was. And I'd be like, but it was sunny like three days ago, you guys. And we moved down here and I was like, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> three days ago was so nice. It's really nice. I was yeah. like, well, I mean, like obviously being British, that's all we talk about is the weather. Uh, and, mm. you know, we've had some spells of weather recently. And then just the other day, it was like everybody in the village, it's like, oh, it's so nice to see the sun. And so nice that the winds dropped. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh. And, you know, like. Yeah, it's feeling spring-like. It's lovely. You know, it's still, everything's nice. still looking dead, but it's like, I feel spring-like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, like up north, it'd be like the first day, it's over like 20 degrees, and you roll your window down on your way into work, and you drive on the highway, and it's like, <sighs> and it's still like really, really cold, but you're like, oh, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> until you can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah. A, it's a full five degrees. We can open the windows now. Woo! <laughs> Right, yeah, we're Celsius, Fahrenheit, but you get the idea. Yeah. Cold, it's still cold. We just think it's warm because we don't yeah, know exactly. any better. You know, like I, I was, <laughs> I was uh, dri- driving around yeah, yesterday, and it like the car said it was eight degrees Celsius, by the way, for the international people. Um, yeah. And it's like oh, it's a really nice day. It's almost balmy. Yeah. I can like you know come down to you know maybe it's just. We have to translate that, but I'm pretty sure that's still way too cold for me. Well, yeah, was it uh, add 32 and some do something else? I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, well, no, that's not enough. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, obviously, our, our system is, like, sensible because it's, you know, you, water, water freezes, water boils, and you do everything in between. It makes yeah, but sense. We don't, we don't like to follow by that <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> what? All right, 8 degrees Celsius for the Americans. Yes, to Fahrenheit. 
46 and a half. No. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, still. Although you'd be burning up if it was 46 and a half over there. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to somebody the but other yeah, day, so cool. like, oh, like anything below 70 is horrible. And you're thinking, 70, what the bloody hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it sounds probably quite warm for this part of the UK anyway. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it still would be not unpleasant, but it would, for Floridians, we'd be like, oh, I don't know, I might need a sweater or a parka <laughs> or something. My oh, you know what? I got to shut my door. I think Pat just got home. So right. here I'm walking around. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. It's quite all right. So anyway, like that, let's get back to the questions. Um, this is like a real, you can tell that I was struggling. <laughs> What's it like being a food photographer? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been doing it for a few years now. Yes, yeah, well, so it depends, I think, on how you're doing it, right? Because like, I was going to say, well, like, obviously, you know, I've known you for a while now, but you, you know, originally you, do it, you were doing everything yourself, but I've noticed it's so you've got, you've got like, you know, a lot of the stuff behind the scenes stuff that i see on instagram now and again it's like you've got a you've got a full team going on so you know is that is that so it'd be more true that's better yeah <laughs> obviously you can split the work yeah well so yeah 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 like when i first like started, obviously projects are getting bigger than bigger yeah yeah it's possible that they're bigger it's also possible they're not that different depending but <laughs> my stress level is much better mm -hmm. Um, and my productivity is better. Everything's like so much better. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's, if we rewind a little bit, when I first started, we were all hanging out yeah. and, uh, distracting and you from your work. Mm -hmm. Cause you were the no, one, no. you were the one doing the real work. We were just dossing around. Well, as I recall, Andre said that food photography was the hardest type of photography to do. And I was like, oh, really? okay <laughs> let's see so i actually got really into it i think i was kind of experimenting at the time with like um stock photography and things like that and so i thought okay well, you know this is an easy way to sort of play around with something and maybe make a little money from it a little money because i think it was on like shutterstock or something at the time mm, yeah and so you know you just throw stuff out there and if they accepted it then you're like oh okay so it's not too bad <laughs> But, um, but then I landed like a really big gig with a big brand and they kind of, they hired me as a graphic designer and then mm -hmm. asked if I knew anyone who could do the photography, which it was a food brand for their catalog. And I was like, oh, I, I could do it. <laughs> you put your hand up going, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you know, the two or three weeks before the project started, I, I read every book watched every tutorial like you know i researched everything meticulously and actually i think like that was still some of like the best work that i ever did because i did, like, worked so hard at it but that was the stupidest way to do it like you should not be the graphic designer <laughs> <laughs> the food stylist the photographer <laughs> the grip the lighting the, you know like set yeah. designer prop stylist like that is just so much for one person to take on it's like unbelievable and you know the, the client was really great to work with um yeah but whew, i don't recommend it and like to be perfectly transparent even during the pandemic when everything like went bananas right like everybody was like is there such a thing as paid work yeah out there anymore like i heard of photographers who were talking about selling off their equipment to pay their mortgage and stuff. right so it was like really scary and i i was approached by a magazine who needed photography and they were paying me pennies but you know it was pay and when you're doing editorial versus um commercial the pay is very very different mm -hmm. i don't understand it i really don't because if you look at it from a practical side you know it's like editorial you have subscribers and advertisers who are paying for that paper and everything you know like it gets distributed and people are buying it it's a gear, like it's it has already a marketplace it is yeah. the product right and then you have advertising and they're like we really think this is going to help us sell our product we're going to pay you money to help us sell our product you're like okay cool and over here they're like 
sort of like exposure books. <laughs> oh, that lovely word. <laughs> yeah. So the you, the pay for editorial is is just absurd, absurd. And then during the pandemic, the reason I got hired was because I'm in Florida and you could do whatever you want in Florida, essentially, after the two week, you know, trying to flatten the curve didn't work. They're like, you know what, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> do whatever you want. It's Florida. The politics down here don't require, doesn't apply, doesn't affect coronavirus. So let's crack on. It doesn't exist. The, the pandemic ended like two years ago yeah. here. It doesn't exist here. Um, I'm being sarcastic, but like the, the, the attitude in Florida is generally pretty lax on mm. all of that. And so um, if you needed to work, you know, if you needed somebody to produce work for you, Florida was the place to do it because yeah. we could go and do you stuff. Were, like, you were still operating. Yeah. Yeah. It took a while. Like it wasn't like instantaneous, yeah. you know, it took and, and companies that are based here took a lot of time to try to figure out the right way to move forward. I mean, mm. everybody had to change their messaging and yeah. like the look, you know, like if you had produced a commercial and everybody was like doing something in a commercial and they weren't wearing a mask, well, now that commercial was no good, right? Like there, there's a lot of like, what do we do? Is it's masking a thing for a long time or is this just like a couple of weeks? Like, yeah, because I, I know when you've been doing, when you've been, you know, working on stuff in the past and, and you know, obviously when we're communion, commun communicating back and forward, you were always yeah. three months or at least a season and a bit ahead of, the current thing because you were like middle of summer you're doing christmas stuff and oh yes and you're doing yes. you know you're doing easter stuff way before christmas and that kind of thing so obviously this coronavirus and everything you know the, the like you how say, do you the, plan the whole messaging yeah. and everything and everything's now going to have a mask on it then there's a there's a <laughs> you know, that t that that time scales you know screwed everything up or it's taken a long time for it to filter through yeah, and imagine now where the, the I think generally countrywide I can't I'm I'm not sure because I'm still in like a Florida-ish bubble, but like mm -hmm. I think nationally here that it seems to be like oh it's over right like mm -hmm. you know Omicron yeah it came by it killed a bunch of people don't talk yeah. about that that didn't totally happen but like <laughs> you know but now it's going down so we're done right yeah no I was, I was talking to somebody. Uh, over on the west coast, and they, I think they was it their mask man ma, ma, mask. Easy to say when you haven't got a stammer. Um, um your their mask the mandate, and <laughs> it was it ends yeah. today or something or or last week or something. Um, I don't know. Yeah, here it's it's a very confusing messaging, and it's it's been confusing messaging from day one because like hmm. they didn't know what was happening. But like, uh, I just almost wish they would say less stuff less frequently because they, they seem to constantly sort of misjudge where things are going. But the I think the latest advice is if the transmission rate in your area isn't high, you can you no longer need to mask. But like the headlines are like masks no longer needed. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But like, wait, 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 but there was a like, little there's no new on like, where you are. Right. Yeah. And I, I think people are just impatient and over it. Mm. And that's really unfortunate because I have friends who, you know, have had mm. um, kidney transplants and people have gone through cancer treatment and stuff. And you're just like, I, I, it's a, it's strange to me to think that like you can be friends with somebody or you can be friends with your neighbor and you can help them like pick up their groceries if they've fallen. But like the minute you need to wear a mask to keep them from getting mortally sick, it's like a, an affront on your person. I don't know. It's just such an easy thing to do. Yeah. Even if you can't, even if for whatever reason you can't get vaccinated, it's like a mask is so simple. I don't mind it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I wear quite... pants in public. That's a nice thing to do. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, 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 I quite like putting my mask on because it covers this up. You know? Well, you know, I don't you mind know? it, especially when it's chilly out, you know? I mean, for, That's for not me, so bad. For, for me, you know, like you take that away, I, I look instantly better. <laughs> It's a mystery what's happening now. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get a pimple or something, you're like, great, ask. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can mouth the words fuck off to anybody now. And, you, can, and, yeah. you can do, you do so whatever. many things with a mask that you can't do without it. Yes, it's, it's like, why, did, why we didn't wear them but long beforehand, like the, uh, the Japanese one. You know, they, they, they wear those all the time because all the smog. I, I know. I think it's not a bad idea that going forward. I think it's such a weird culture. At least I don't know if it was there, but like here, if somebody showed up and they had the flu or something at work, mm. you'd have like this tiny little like boardroom you had to sit in with a bunch of people. You're like, 
they show up and they're like, <laughs> and there's like, you know, snot rags everywhere. That was just normal. It was like, you had to show up whether you were sick or not. Yeah. There was no such thing. Like you, there were paid sick days, but you weren't supposed to actually take them, you know? And I, I think like, I don't know, I was on set just before the holidays and one of the, the prop stylists there was sick with a fever. And of course we're like, did you get tested? Right. She was wearing a mask and I was like, you know, inches from her on set because we were in this tiny little room and we were photographing like a, a bathroom countertop. So it was a bathroom we were in and she's like reaching in and doing stuff. And she's like, oh my God, I think my fever just broke. And I'm like, oh, oh God. My God, what is happening? But I had a mask on, she had a mask on. I never got sick. Nobody got mm. sick from her. She had a mask on. It's like, oh, oh my gosh, I didn't have to get the flu. That's great. <laughs> Novel yes. idea. Yeah, so Anyways, this has nothing to do with photography except you got a little BTS there. Thank well, yeah, we, we all like that. We all, well, to be honest, I think every episode of, of this podcast I've done, it's always, it's all descended into COVID. So that's, that's <laughs> oh, fine. shit. Well, let's not do that anymore. Let's talk about <laughs> photography. Because well, yeah, people uh, are tired of COVID. I, we, we, yeah. Plah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously you do, so, well, back in the day, you you did a lot of stuff actually at home in your own yes. kitchen and studio. Have not, And you've just mentioned that you were on set elsewhere. Is that yes. is there more of it going on away from home now, or is it? Or is... Depends. It depends on the client. Um, I, I prefer, it, especially. Sorry, during this pandemic, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do as much stuff here. It's not a big space, and it is mm. my work live space, right? Like I, yeah. I sleep down there, so yeah. you know, I'd rather not have a bunch of people in here. Um, when I do have people here, there's a big old protocol, and I got filters going and stuff. But like, mm. it's so much better to be at a studio, yeah, you've got a lot more elbow room. There's so much more space. The studio that we, we've we used a lot has like tons of grip equipment and then they've got people there too, which is fantastic. Like I show up and I'm like, okay, we're gonna set this kind of thing up. Like maybe we're doing like a tabletop or we're doing a sweep or something. And I've got extra hands to help, which is fantastic. Um, but like the, the bathroom set, like we had a, uh, somebody did a location scout, found a location. So we shot different rooms in a house. I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole other thing, like lighting an entire house. Mm. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. It's not the kind of thing you can just Photoshop out or in. No, or, you, know. you know, and I think, I think a lot of clients, if I, if I can speak to this for a second, I think a lot of potential clients or new brands and stuff don't have a good understanding of maybe different levels of photography and what it takes to do mm -hmm. some of this stuff. Like if they're, they approach me and I've been getting a lot of this, like, well, we've got $3,000, mm -hmm. you know, well, first you try to have that budget conversation and yeah, I yeah. will literally say, well, look, at, I'm different. not. Yeah, but like, right. Because it, it actually costs me money to make an estimate for someone yeah. like literally cost me dollars not just in time, but I might like, you know, speak to some other people mm -hmm. and, and, you know, get, if, if you're talking about casting and things like that, I need to pull other expertise into it to put together the, I'm not a producer. I need to pull someone who has that knowledge yeah. into my process. And so I'll have the, like the first thing I'll try to ask somebody is like, what's your budget? And I, and I, I say outright, like, I'm not asking this so that I know like how much I can get out of you. I'm asking this so that I know that like, when I put a number together, I'm not up here and you're down here and we just, there's no meeting. I yeah. want to make sure that you, I'm not wasting your time and not that you're trying to waste my time, but like, if we aren't going to be able to speak the same language, you know, let's, let's wish each other the best and say, Hey, maybe someday, but like, you know, let's yeah. not make me jump through hoops and stuff. But so like, literally I'll ask and often the, the answer comes back. Oh, we don't know. Or, you know, you're at a different level of photography than we've worked with before. So you tell us, you know, what it would take to do this. And I go, like, I heard that one recently and I was like, oh, well, this is, this has potential because they'd run into some trouble using some like basically automated service where they right. send their product in and they check a few boxes and they get some pictures back. And they said mm -hmm. like, at first it worked out really well, but then the service got really busy and the quality of the work went down and yeah. the retouching wasn't done right. And, you know, like it just wasn't working for them anymore. And I was like, well, here's a client who's sort of self-educated. They know what they get at this price point and they're looking for a better finished product. Okay. And when they said they didn't know what their budget was, I was a dummy. <laughs> and I was like, great. Well, you know, 
I'll, I'll give you a number and then, you know, you're happy, you're more than welcome to like ask me questions about it. And, you know, I'm gonna, there's, there is some play in there, but like, you know, yeah. it did not, it did not the, end. Yeah, the they may well get a shock, <laughs> you know, if they're yes. not, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not fucking level, yeah. Well, and I got the question from them, like, well, why is this person charging 3000 and you're charging? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, they're photographing their kid behind them with their like iPhone. Potentially, I'm not putting yeah. down anybody who's because like I used to do a bunch of stuff on my own too. But like a lot of the people who are like influencers or creators are working fast and cheap. They're using the same props for everybody. They're using the same house for everybody, the same people. It's their family. They're using, you know, and I've seen as somebody who also comes from the graphic design side, and I've been tapering off on that, but I've seen the work that comes through from influencers and stuff. And some have a really very beautiful and personal aesthetic that they follow, but then that doesn't jive with the rest of your stuff, right? Yeah. You know, they might be adding some sort of filter or they've got some crazy post-processing that's like, you know, cross-processing or some something that makes it look like it's distinctly theirs. But then that coloring and that post-processing doesn't match your campaign yeah. at all. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that that photographer isn't talented and that that photography isn't attractive. It just isn't, you're hiring them to do what they do quickly and they're mm -hmm. charging you a minimal fee for that. And that's fair -ish. I don't know what usage you're getting and blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting into all of that, but geez. But if you want somebody to like build your brand, that's different. You know, like you want something that's going to like really shine for your, your company. And it's the, the imagery that you're going to be like putting out there as like the cornerstone of your brand. And that needs to be like really crisp and really clean. And the messaging yeah. has to be like really on point. You can't just grab like whatever, you know, people and stuff you have around you, you want to have some control over what you're, you're getting. And so that versus that. That's where the, and that's where the difference come in. And obviously, I mean, the other, the other, yeah. the other way I can, see you know somebody come to you is that you know on your on your resume on your cv then it probably says background in, in graphic design so you you're oh, you instantly <laughs> you, you should be you know you, you should be able to adapt not adapt but understand the you know the, the where the these images are going to be yeah. put into to give yeah. ultimate you know confidence to the client that yeah you know you because like you said like you influence generally they'll, they're using the same preset on Lightroom or, or on the iPhone or whatever. And, you know, if it, if it's green and then the simplifying things, if the processing's yeah. green too, and, and the other, you know, the, the, exactly the rest that. of the campaign's orange, yeah. it, you know, it ain't gonna, right. it's not gonna sing together. They got some sort of like retro filter that makes it look all warm and sunny. Yeah. And then everything else is just like perfect white balance. Like, yeah. but <laughs> No, no, it doesn't. Um, and then I've seen other things where like people will like hold a product and <laughs> here, uh, they'll hold a product like this. Mm -hmm. And you, but like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, just check, just check. Yeah. Do the basics. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like out of focus and stuff like, like the, the scenery is great. The, mm -hmm. the girls who are in the photos are great. And then the product is out of focus. So the product's not facing front or, or like I've seen also like um, when it comes to skincare products, like they're using the wrong product in the wrong setting. Right. Like putting sunscreen on in the shower. I've not seen anything that bad, but like that's an example, you know, or they're putting on, you know, like night anti-aging serum at the beach. You know, they're just like, oh, we'll take your product and we'll shoot it and you'll get these files. And you don't really get a say because they're just doing it. Yeah. And that's fine. If it that's, works out great. That's fine if you're Sometimes paying for their million subscribers that are going to see this kind of yeah. stuff. Great, yeah. right. But, but yeah. those million subscribers probably don't care that it's the wrong stuff in the wrong place. It's just... Oh, they don't care. <laughs> there's, there, there's the yeah. link to whatever it is and click on yeah. that and then they get more views and whatever. Yeah. When it yeah. Comes down, they're just after, after views and a bit of participation. Aren't they? I've also heard from clients that they've been held sort of hostage by influencers. I'm not saying all influencers do this at all, but like mm -hmm. you could get the wrong person and somehow they feel like you have done something wrong to them. Like, right. I don't know, like you didn't give them enough exposure on your Instagram. I don't know how their contracts work because I'm mm -hmm. not an influencer, 
but like, you know, if something wasn't communicated perfectly or they wanted more free stuff than you gave them or what, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not judging. So don't anyone come after me. I don't know how it works, but like, I've heard from clients that they've like run into a situation where like that relationship has gone south. And then the influencer is like, well, I'm going to tell all my followers to boycott you. And then, you know, like cancel culture you. And it's like, whoa, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that doesn't happen with me. <laughs> because You just pay to do reasons. a job. <laughs> pay me to do a job. I will do the job. I'm not going to like, you know, you can't pay me extra to post it on my Instagram. I will probably post it on my Instagram because it's awesome stuff, but oh, like, yeah. you know, but it, like, that's not a part of my contract. I'm not an influencer and I don't have enough followers to make it worth your time anyways. And we're probably all photographers who are looking at my stuff on my Instagram. I think it's probably like five potential clients and like the rest are all photographers, <laughs> just like I am to everybody else. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I exist in that plane of existence as well. Whereas everybody that follows me is another photographer. So yeah, or a, it or makes a, it feel or really a friend strange. or a neighbor, <laughs> you know, why, why do I, why am I getting excited that this one got so many likes and that one didn't? I'm like, my photographers were asleep today <laughs> or they were awake and they saw it. Yay. <laughs> well, it comes down you know, to it's so weird. Oh, I hate social media. Is it yeah. obvious? <laughs> I liked hangouts. It was real people. We talked to each other. Exactly. And you haven't got a battle against the, the Twitter algorithm, which I'm, oh. battle, well, I'm saying I'm battling at the minute. I think I've pretty much just given up <laughs> today. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even like, know. Nobody's actually seeing this, are they? <laughs> I was on Twitter for, I think, five minutes. I mean, I have an account and it like, it just sort of like, I just post automatically to it. So I think I sometimes I'll get like one like. <laughs> pretty much but my like, existence as well yeah i don't know i don't know I, I have made i have made actual friends on instagram so i shouldn't totally mm. poo-poo it but like it's not it's not um i think the anguish that you get from it it's still worth it for the people that i have met but there's so much there's so much like yeah. pressure to be on there it's, there's pressure to do new features there's pressure to like post on a regular basis there's pressure to like get enough likes or and now you can like stories. Did they have to do that? Oh. Yeah, I noticed that the other day. It's like, uh, but yeah. Who needs that? Now I'm going to be like, they didn't like my story. Well, I mean, the bit that... Who cares? Let's, let's get completely distracted. The, the bit that I, I hate about Instagram at the minute is that it's not a photo app anymore. You know, they've added mm -hmm. in reels and... Oh, yeah. And, and all that kind of stuff. And, the, you know, the reckon you'll not... You know, the algorithm will knock you back if you're not doing the odd video post and you're like oh for god's sake um, yeah no forget it i they know who i am now they've got me figured out all they send me reels are mountain biking videos <laughs> i'll be like do 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 i got a couple minutes between calls or something and it's not enough time to like dig into work so i'll, I'll look and i'm like ooh, oh that looks like a cool trail <laughs> Ooh, oh wait that's a cool trick how did they do that oh they got over that rock really nicely <laughs> has nothing to do with photography so like i'm i'm always scrolling through pictures and illustration and animation like i finally started to like pair back on trying to follow brands on instagram because i don't think they care they're not mm -hmm. going to notice me out of like millions so i'm like forget that and and instead you know i'm following people whose art i really like whether it's mm -hmm. illustration comic books if it's um you know uh knitting who cares like if Anything that's interesting and that I find compelling, ceramics. Oh my gosh, I, I was always a terrible ceramicist, but I love good ceramics. But like, you know, I'm I'm fed up trying to like curate some sort of professional thing. Like my my feed and all that is pretty, you know, that. But like when I'm out there looking on Instagram, I'm not looking. I don't know. You know, I'm that, not that, looking to like know. make that. Yeah, you're not you're not out there looking for uh, for trade on it, really. You're not. You, you you put you. I mean, you're obviously putting your own stuff out there, but you're not like yeah. purposely hounding this magazine no. or this 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 brand of food. Well, because that kind also of stuff. because whoever's managing their social media mm. isn't necessarily the branch of that company that I want to work with. The people who are managing the social media marketing arm are typically the ones who are hiring content creators and influencers. And so like, if they catch me on there and they're like, Ooh, we like your work. We'd like to collaborate. Those are the terms they use. It's not <laughs> like 
we have a project and we would like to hire you. We'd like to collaborate. Red flag. Yeah. <laughs> collaborate. Then you means... know their budget is like. They're know. not paying you. <laughs> yeah, we'll pay you $200 an image. You're like, whoa, really? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like this this studio is empty minus I have like a mushroom growing kit there and a bunch of cables to charge batteries. But to set this studio up alone takes a, what, half hour at least? I gotta get the C stands least, yeah. up the table that swoop. And then I have to prop the set. And then that's probably gonna take what, like another 15, 20 minutes, at least if I already know what the props are. But if I don't know yeah. what the props are and I've got to think on it and be like, well, this or that or that, that could take another hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's a, what's a, you know, just a rough $100 an hour. We're already at $150. Sort of yeah. like, you know, you start adding this stuff up. Then we get the camera on. Then we test the lighting, we, you know, make sure the white balance is correct. Maybe adjust some things. Then I, you know, take a few test shots. And then if I have to still cook the food and then style it, then put it on here and then photograph it. No, that's, I mean, and so someone who asked, you know, why, why does this person charge a hundred dollars for a photo? I couldn't tell you. They got time. They yeah. got time. They're trying to learn. I don't know. Or they're, you know, they're willing to do it, but like people yeah, got to learn their worth. Yeah. Basically, basically, you know, I mean, from, for, for, well, for probably any food photographer is that it's going to take like all that setup time and doing it right to yeah. press the shot at once. It's probably going to take all day. Yeah, well, not only that, how about yeah. you got to get the food here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still have to go to the store. You still have to get in your car. That's billable time. Yeah, that's not magic. It doesn't just show up in my fridge. So like, you know, and, and somebody might be like, well, but you probably have it in your kitchen. But it's mine. That's my food. <laughs> I eat that food. So I and still got to go to the it, store. Been under lights for God knows how long. I am not going to eat it. You can't eat it. I Some of it you can. But some of it you can't. And it's not because I put motor oil on it. There's no motor <laughs> oil. And there's also no Elmer's glue in anything that I do. There's this video that goes around and I get it from like, I get it from somebody about every two to three weeks. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's like this top secret food styling. <laughs> and you're like, none of that is true. I've never screwed a pizza into a table. <laughs> I've never put Elmer's glue on a pizza. I've never mixed Elmer's glue with chocolate powder and then made a molten lava cake. If you want the molten lava cake, here's a hot tip. You want the molten lava cake to actually ooze out molten lava. You cook it and then you take some raw batter and you spoon it in there, not Elmer's glue. <laughs> and then you take that shot. There's my hot tip for you, you but it's not Elmer's glue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have I received that video too many times? Maybe. I did. I did see one with, with several tricks. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on TikTok, so. <laughs> and yeah, I did, I did, I did immediately think of you, Suzanne. I'm like, well, uh, I know, Su I know, I know Suzanne does. does it, does it naturally. So I know for a fact this isn't, you know. It's always food, always food. Yeah, yeah. it's it's at least always edible. It might there there are very rare occasions where you can fudge it a little bit. Like I'll give you an example. If you're selling ice cream, it has to literally be the ice cream you're selling. It's mm -hmm. truth in advertising. You can't, you, and mashed potatoes make terrible ice cream people. So stop <laughs> suggesting it's mashed potatoes. It is absolutely not mashed potatoes. If you want to try that out at home, make some mashed potatoes, use an ice cream scoop and tell yourself, hmm, does that look like delicious ice cream? <laughs> no, no, it does not. <laughs> so stop it. No matter how much but, Photoshop and lighting you put on it, it still not, doesn't look like ice cream. Yes. They're, they're like, just put pepper on it. And now it looks like uh, what a vanilla flakes. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nope. Stop it. No. So if, but so let's say you're selling the cone, right? So the ice cream cone or cup or something, then your ice cream doesn't have to be real. But then what is it? Most of the time, a, a purist will make sure it's actually real ice cream. But if you need something to be on set for a long time, maybe you're shooting um, like a, you're doing like product instead. So there's like a living room and then a kitchen counter or something, and they've got an ice cream sundae or something, and they need it to last a while. You can make that out of icing sugar and um, icing. So you buy a tub of like pre-made icing for a cake. Right. And then you add more powdered sugar. It makes very convincing ice cream. Right. Okay. But you still also have to add melt and I'll let you try to figure out how to do that. I'm not going to tell you everything. <laughs> no secrets will be divulged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if it's food that they're selling, if it's a hot pocket they're selling, if it's a, you know, pancake, if it's ice cream, it is the real food. It mm. has to be. Yeah. Although somehow I think you guys have uh, what? What's your ice cream company over there? Walls. Coronet. Walls. Oh, maybe. 
Walls make Corn, a lot is of it. A, cornet or something? I don't know. Yeah. There's, well, there's a cor cornet who is a type of ice cream. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. Uh, well yeah, maybe it's not the company that. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't eat many much ice cream. You wouldn't I did believe see it. Somewhere. But, you wouldn't believe it by the size of me, but I don't eat much ice cream. So. Well, and I'm lactose intolerant, so I'm like a little bit out of the game on that one. But there, <laughs> there, there, there was a company that I was looking for faux fruit because that's one of the other things that, that I run into a lot is mm -hmm. a client will be like, oh, I really need cherries. And you're like, great. I can't get them anymore as of like last week. <laughs> and so, you know, you're when you have to source this stuff, you're trying to figure out like any way around it. And I was trying to find like faux food, like right. high quality, mm. you're going to pay like $200 for one cherry, yeah. right? It's got to be perfect. And it's like made out of resin or something. Mm. It's got, it's got a pliability to it and whatever. And there I saw Magnum. That's who I'm thinking of. It's not All you right. guys, though. but you're familiar with Magnum, yes, right? Yes, yes. And I saw that they had um, the company that was selling this particular faux fruit sold the Magnum mold of like what the magnum so it was right. fake ice cream they but it was real it was a real item right mm -hmm. so it wasn't computer generated or anything like i'm trying to do over here now but like that's an aside i'm just trying to teach myself greedy and i'm having a <laughs> honestly hard time with honestly it. <laughs> yeah this has nothing to do with food photography i'm trying to make a fishbowl right now but anyways but it was like they were like we did the magnum like of some sort of like you know possible thing and mm -hmm. i was like what it was in advertising what happened <laughs> So I don't know, maybe because they're like, I don't think they're a U.S. company, so maybe they get away with maybe it. Maybe they can, yeah, they can get away with it. Yeah. There's but, probably, a, at the very least, very severe retouching and fancy, fancy stuff happening. Well, yeah. And that, I mean, so, also on the, on the, on the on, I was going to say on the retouching stuff, but I know it'd be a few years ago now, but I remember you were doing a lot of work with chocolates. Mm-hmm. Boxes of chocolate. It's a good segue. And, and it was... It, I was going to say, it, it was almost horif horrific to hear how long you worked on said chocolates before you shot them. Never yes. mind before you put them into, you know, like shot them and then went into Photoshop and cleaned them up. And know. still, like, it's still and it's, as like, much You're time. sitting there with brushes brushing away all this chocolate <laughs> dust or whatever. Yes. And it was remarkable to learn that kind of stuff. This is my chocolate polishing brush. But for those of you on, on audio only, Suzanne has presented a brush. Oh, yeah. See, this is the technique <laughs> that I employ. So Polish, uh, Polishing a chocolate. Yes, cotton glove, because mm -hmm. you don't want your heat from your hand to transfer. But I would so I'll put like, uh, like uh, vinyl gloves on, then a cotton glove over it. So <laughs> extra security. And then you try to hold it in like, in the little part of your hand yeah. here and polish it as much as you can you'd be surprised because when you're you're photographing something that small it's basically macro and so any imperfection on the chocolate is like this big on your It'd screen like everest you, there's like a fuzz that you can't even see with the naked eye but in the camera it's like this big across your screen so you're like where is it you get your tweezers you're like and you got your you get the glasses on <laughs> yes it's awful um, I love chocolate, but it is it is massively challenging. I still do chocolate. Um, I still have a chocolate client that I work with, and he's fantastic. But yes, it takes a ton of time. And then, God forbid, like that's just if you just need the outside to look good. But sometimes you need to cut them open. Mm. And I had I was doing a series of cut opens. So like you know when you buy your box of chocolates and you can see what's inside, like those shots. Yeah. And they're not sexy in the sense that like I do them and I could put them on Instagram. People are like, who cares? <laughs> Just this it's thing. taken me seven so, days to be able to do this. It's just so abstract, though. Like as, a, as as its own thing, you're like, okay, but that work takes so much time. Anyway, so he had one where it was two different fillings, but the the actual bonbon itself was like round, so you didn't know what, like where the split was. All right, so you needed it to be half and half. <laughs> I think he gave me like ten. I was going to say, do, do you say do you say like send me a hundred of those? <sighs> Dude, I wish I had a hundred because I would have been like, nope, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Instead, I was like, me. <laughs> and then I, I, I scoop it out of one half and the other, and like make a little pile of one color and another pile of another color, and then shove it back in, and then set it on set, and then it would start to go blurb out. <laughs> but so, you know, there's like a lot of, 
shenanigans, but it doesn't mean that the product isn't real. It's just like, they want you to be able to see it's like half and half. So yeah. you have to make sure that this half is this and this half is that. And then it all, and of course there, one was like caramel and then I think it was a mousse. So it didn't ooze and I, I didn't right. know. I was like, it's not oozing. The other side's already like, ooh, it's already gone. <laughs> it's already left. <laughs> like this side's just hanging out there. Like, I don't know what's going on. But this other side, I'm like doing everything, every trick I know to try to get it to ooze and it's not oozing. It's like, oh, it's a mousse. I'll be on. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I worked really hard time. on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, chocolate is very unique and, mm. you know, very touchy. But did you see, I don't know if you guys got it over there. It was like the chocolate school or something on Netflix. This French uh, guy, fantastic. Right. It was like, it, you know, it was like one of those British Bake Off things, but mm -hmm. with chocolate. And they kept everybody from the beginning all the way to the end, which I thought was awesome. But he had this awesome polishing technique. And anyone that I know who worked in like any sort of styling of chocolate, we were all like, did you see that episode? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> I can't wait to try it. <laughs> So check that out. We're all trying that now. <laughs> all right, I will I will look out for it. I mean, it was it made yeah. by Netflix, was it? Or was it just on? Um, school of Chocolate, Ch Chocolate School, something. I don't know. See, I, I, this is why I'm not an influencer, because I cannot properly call, like, right call out things. Yeah, I'll be like, you oh, to. was that actor was in that movie like 10 years ago? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's one that's one that was in the movie two years ago, and you're thinking, who? I know, think what, they, were they were blonde and then it turns out they were brunette I'm like, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> do you get i was going to say you mentioned ceramics earlier on do you get it's again it's it's like the whole game show type of crafty you know oh yeah um over here it's a few series of, oh, i think there's been really yeah, about five or six one. years and it's and it's uh the great pottery throwdown that's right, it is. I watched the first one. They lost me at the tea set because I'm American. Right. After that, <laughs> you're like, like, who Meh. cares about the tea set? <laughs> I, I, caught, I, caught the, I caught the end of last night. Um, and and because uh, I think it was the semi final, it's the final next week mm -hmm. of the current series. And um, they made you urinals, as you do. Oh, I love how you say that, though. Say it again. Urinals. Oh, you'll probably say yeah. urin urinals or something. Urinals. Like yeah, your rhinos. I your like rhinos. that. Yes, I, think, yeah. I don't. I think. I think we say it better, but I like how you say it. Urinal sounds. I'll, I'll go. Like I'll go along with that. Dirty. Yeah, I'll your rhino. That. that sounds more dirty. Well, it's a fairly dirty thing, to be honest. <laughs> I know. I know. But urinal seems like well, we just got to go pee. It's okay. <laughs> Yours is all like we're gonna really go pee at the yeah. urinal. Yeah. But anyways, that's they had to make those. What's wait? That's the final. Was the that was a, that was a se that was a semi 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 final was to make that and i think i, I, saw I don't a bit even want to know they, made, they were making some abstract figurines last week which i i, 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 I don't know i can't I can't quite explain it but it's in yeah it's one of it's like the like the bake-offs and all this kind of stuff it's one of those that was like i really like it <laughs> try to, <laughs> well, try yeah, to catch yeah. it whenever it's on it's like i've got no interest in ceramics or pottery or anything like that so um, yeah 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 where you're like it's just really good it's just really good <laughs> Have you seen Blown Away? We're segueing ever so slightly, but Blown Away is the glass blowers. And they're actually at Sheridan College, <clears throat> who didn't accept me. All right. <clears throat> but it's okay. I think one of your guys won from right. England. Right. Mm -hmm. He was pretty killer. Right. Well, but that, there's, some, there's some traditional glass blowing um, areas. I think Sundal in, Sund Sunderland is a big gla yeah, uh, glass blowing area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, we have them here too. <laughs> Well, you know, corning and whatnot, but but yeah, but so yeah, I remember actually when I was looking at Sheridan for my college and I went mm -hmm. and visited the campus and we saw the glass blowing um, area of the campus and I was like, oh, this is cool. Literally, though, very very hot. It's very hot, but it was like really interesting because they have this like balcony where you could like look over and see the all the people you know making and breaking mm -hmm. glass. Yeah, that's cool. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Um. All right, back to my list of. Um, I think we've gone through two questions at least now. Well, I, I think we've. That's We're it, doing to be pretty honest, good. To be honest, that was only one question. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we covered a lot of. We did. We. Ground, I think. I'm, I'm sure we've kind of covered more. <laughs> <we>? um, <laughs> um. 
I was going to say, I, I, looking looking through your um, your portfolio, yeah, and it is. I, I can see that there's a definite style in your in the work that you've certainly push put on there. Obviously, it'll yeah. vary from project to project and client to client. Yeah, oh, sure. Yep. So, is is the stuff that's on your portfolio? Is there a lot of personal work as well that you've done, and can can you put your own, you know more influences into that? into yeah, that, that yeah. side of stuff because I, I i can whether it's just me looking from a you know a, a win a very win, wintry feeling dour country oh. uh yeah, and looking at your like, looking at <laughs> looking at your work i can see the florida sunshine influence in it quite heavily and all them bright colors and everything it's that's just... fair yeah you know it's funny i think one of the things um let me, i'm gonna actually pull up my website because i'm gonna look at it just so i can maybe point out something but um, as the person who's creating the work, you kind of like don't realize some of the stuff that you're doing consistently. Because I remember like even a couple of years ago, three years, four years, whatever, people would be like, oh, I could tell that was yours right away. Like, mm. I have no idea how. Um, but on my homepage, like the first page that you go to, if you go to SuzanneClements.com is predominantly personal work. Right. Yeah, I would say there's a lot on there that is personal. There's some that's like delish. Some of it is um, test shoots. Some of it is client work, but but predominantly that homepage is like work that I'm excited about personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it isn't specifically to like one category or another. So that's more of like the experimental stuff, I would say. And then if you drill down, you know, to food or whatever, I need to update that. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all need to update our websites we do, but then we then you get into like the more like here's here's what like clients pay me to do yeah 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 it's interesting though too because like i wonder when somebody lands on that first page i would love to be a client and like not have any idea who i am and look mm -hmm. at this and think of how i would translate this to my project yeah because i'd be curious to know how that sort of thought process process works on the other side for them but um so have you i mean that's always a bit pretentious but have you, have you ever like asked clients about that kind of thing is <laughs> it was like how can i get work, more work from other clients uh, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> right. a bit that sounds a bit right. i feel like everybody's got a crystal ball and there's a lot of people out there who would be happy to try to read their crystal ball for you for a fee hmm. But I don't think that anybody knows precisely. And I think the market is so strange. Like I said, because we've got like content creators and influencers out there. We've also got, um, we've got some really bad things that are happening where I don't think naive is quite the right word, but when you're talking about somebody who's green in commercial photography, right? they don't know how to protect themselves, how to protect their copyright, how to protect like their billable rate like mm. you create work that someone wants to hire you for good <laughs> don't give it away and that's not because like i'm mad because you're like undercutting me i just think like you need to think about all the time that you put into something and if you're not thinking about all the time you're putting into it and you're just giving all those hours away at the end of the day you might be paying to do this work yeah or well, almost paying. Think about what you're actually making per hour for all the time it takes you to think through how you're going to shoot this and talk to the client about how they want something done. And then, you know, getting out all this stuff, all of that is your time. And if you add that up and, and figure out, okay, I made a hundred dollars on this photo. Well, you might find out you only made like $2. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there are, there are these, um, different, um, I'm trying to think of what you would call them, but they're these websites that try to like aggregate photographers who are green right. and put them out into the market. And so you've got huge brands like General Mills and Kellogg's and stuff who are out there, like even big beverage companies, huge, huge, huge brands who have budget. And they're like, hey, you know what? We need about mm, 12 to 24 photos, eight animations. And we need you to style some photography for us. Like basically take our product and make it into a cute set. And we want you to make like 12 totally different sets. That's different backgrounds, different, 
props. That's a lot of work. That's money. <laughs> you're probably going out and buying plates and surfaces and stuff yep. so that you can do this work because you're like, oh, it's great. And they'll pay you hmm, anywhere from $800 to $3,000 for that work. Mm -hmm. You still have to do all the post processing for that. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> we haven't even got to that yet. Yeah. Oh my God, the amount of work. I mean, when you're first starting out, your post processing may be very simple. And then there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing that whatsoever. And, and so your process may be much more streamlined than someone who's doing some very like technical type of work, but it's still time. It's all time. And these big brands are totally taking advantage of that, mm -hmm. of these people who don't know any better. And they're asking for unlimited, exclusive worldwide rights in perpetuity, as in they can use that image, however, whenever, wherever they want, forever, forever. And you just gave it away. Yeah, but nothing. Think about, think about the contrast of that. I could sell stock photography, you know, a photo, pardon me, for like $75. I didn't do anything for a specific client. I put it out there on spec. But that client had no say over what the set was, mm -hmm. where the location was, what the lighting was, none of it. And they bought it for $75 and then bought an extended license for 250 bucks to say that they had extended usage. I already made way more on that than some, you know, exclusive setup yeah. that somebody else is doing. If you've got to know your value or you're going to keep making the market just sort of implode well, yeah, yeah, and no one can make a living wage. Yeah. I mean, that, that's been the problem in photography for years now is that everybody, yeah. I've been thinking everybody about, has a camera on their phone. You know, well, there's that, but uh, I mean the whole stock, stock photography market, which, you know, you've been experienced it way more experienced yeah. in uh, to the point you've actually do stock photography where I don't, but um, <laughs> you should have gotten in. I don't I know why, <laughs> but at this point, bleh. somebody couldn't hold the camera straight uh, steady for a long enough time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's not much call for them kind of images uh i don't but, know but, but the you know the prol proliferation of, of those services you know with the as the internet got bigger and bigger the, and yeah. the more and more people were taking photographs and saying oh you can do this as a li limit uh, as a living or as a side hustle or whatever and right. the, pr the price came down and down and down and down to the point where you've got unsplash now where it's now nothing you shouldn't do Unsplash. I, and people shouldn't use images from Unsplash and people shouldn't put them out there. Mm -hmm. There's like, as, as a buyer, like as a, as a graphic designer, never in a million years. Cause you don't yeah. know if the person who uploaded is actually the person who owns it. Yeah. If there's a hand, a body part, a face, any a location, has it got a model release? Is it a proper model release? Is it legal? Um, have they checked it for logos and branding and branding colors? There's so many things that you don't know. And Who's going to be liable if that image, um, you know, in, uh, yeah. intersects with the, intellectual property that yeah. somebody else is going to fight over? You, the photographer, are the one who gets to go to court. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then the person who used the image, that's your first point of contact for the lawsuit. Don't do it. <laughs> go to a proper agency. And Unsplash is like giving your work away does not, does not earn you rent. Yeah, people are just but, happy to get free stuff yeah but that, that i mean that's how, how bad it's got and but it, it's all you know similar to other you know other types of photography i mean like from my side of things like landscape photography you'll get you'll get guys that go go to like the you know the local markets or you know the regional markets and they're, sell, mm -hmm. they're selling mounted images in a nice wrapper uh and all that for like 20 quid you know oh, good yeah. you know good you know de you know decent yeah, maybe it's a3 kind of size prints yeah you know all, all ready to go all you need is a frame on them and some of them will be framed and they'll be 20 quid more and then you're just like you've got to shift a hell of a lot to make yeah and anything. how much is it costing them to do that yeah, exactly i mean to have all that stock i mean i yeah. only, i print to order because i can't afford to have the stock line so you no know. i've never that's almost like trying to do an art show yeah. just as um, that just was like another realm that I lived in and like mm. exhibiting art as a painter was way less overhead than as a photographer. Mm -hmm. Cause now you like, you've got matte, you've got, and if you're, if you're lucky, it's just matte back matte print and then in a, in a sleeve or whatever. Yeah. But if you actually have to put that in a frame, then you have glass and it's just like, holy smokes. 
you cannot price this stuff so cheap that the frame costs more than your photography. Yeah. That's insane. Somebody walks in the gallery and they say, I'd like that, but how much is it without the frame? It should not be like, oh, well, like it's 75% off. That's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. You need to charge for your work. Yeah. You've worked hard at it. You have exactly. a skill. People love it. You know, like there's a reason why people are drawn to your work. You need to pay. You know, like, I know. I know, like I say, and, like, and, and the, you know, the, those, those, those types lower the floor for everybody else instead of, you know, raising the, you know, keeping it to a level where people can make money, make a living. They need to make money you too. Know, they, like, they why are just, they making it so hard know, on themselves? Yeah, they've just <laughs> killed it just because, like, oh, well, you know, it's just a hobby or whatever. And you're like, yes, it might just be a hobby, but there's a lot of us trying to make a living out of it. And yeah. Um, well, can I also say to that point, when it comes to like commercial work, like, working on your own and having a skill and having an eye and talent and like you've got so much individualized skill behind what you do andy that like people can't just automatically do what you do i watched your editing video and i was like holy shit forget it <laughs> you had like the fast forward on today and i was like oh oh yeah he's he's explained this to me before but now i'm watching it and i'm like nope mm -mm. because it's like a journey like how do you know when you're done it's like painting yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, only like, you know. With, with, with you know, with my, with the kind of stuff I'm, I do, it, you know, is people do say like, when do you know when it's done? And it's like, well, it's the same as a painting. You abandon it. Yeah. You might go back to it three years later, but you abandon it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you just have to. You just have to. Okay. Like, this yeah. Feels... A lot, a lot, a lot of the stuff with my like with my work, it, you know, all the analogies apply to the, like the painted world. Yeah, yeah, and so I guess so. To segue from that is saying, you know, for you in here somewhere, there's not like there's not a button that gets pushed or a light that goes off and says you're done. Yeah. It's it's all about your intuition as an artist. And so when you're doing like the work that I do, you've got that sure sure, but I've also got people I have to pay, <laughs> and that's like another thing that people don't understand yeah. when when you're hiring. I have I have prop stylists who are going to charge you know close to a thousand dollars a day, and they're not just working that day they shop too mm -hmm. they shop one two three days who knows and then they do a return day plus guess what that's their hourly like their day rate you also have to pay for the props and then you've got a food stylist who again has to shop who has to prep who has to you know then they're on set and you still have to pay for the food you've got a uh, talent let's say you've got somebody who's in the photo maybe they're just hands maybe they're a body maybe they're who knows what i don't know what they are but they're human and they're in your photo you have to pay a casting agent. You have to pay the model a day rate. You have to buy them out for the usage, which is such a word that people don't understand that yeah. you, you pay for usage. And then you also have hair and makeup if you have talent most of the time, or at the very least you have a manicure mm -hmm. and then um, wardrobe. <laughs> like they just don't show up ready to go. Yeah. And if they, if you were hoping for that, maybe they show up okay. But a lot of times, you know, like what the model owns at home isn't really necessarily what you want them to well, wear on yeah, set. Yeah, it's not going to fit that. You still have to also, pay, you, you don't have to pay these people, you have to feed them. They're there for an entire day. So you mm. have to have something for them to eat while they're there in between shots, like snacks and beverages and stuff like that. And you have to feed them lunch. And if you're there longer, you also have to feed them dinner. They don't sit there and like waste away at your whim. And then on top of that, where are you shooting? So maybe you have um, location scouted a house. You have to pay a fee for the house. You may yeah. have to pay for, um, you know, local uh, laws might require you to pull a permit. Permits and stuff, you yeah. Yeah, you also have to prep the house, putting down cardboard or mm -hmm. paper so people don't scuff the floor or ruin a good like lamp or something. You know, like somebody has to go through and make sure that the house is okay to go in. And then you do all your crazy chaos. I would never ever give my house up for a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like all these people show up. There's so much equipment. You never knew your house could look so chaotic. And then like they take pictures before the photo shoot mm -hmm. starts. So they know like these trash keys go on the shelf. This food was in this fridge. Like you, they go through everything. But that's someone's job too, is to go through and photograph mm -hmm. where everything was and then put everything back. And like, that's the stuff you don't see. 
And mm -hmm. let's say you even just do it in a studio. You still have to pay to use the studio. You still have like C stands and grip and lighting and stuff that goes up and then comes back down. Like everything has to happen. And so like, you're like, but you charge too much. You know, I have to charge for all of those things that happen. To I've, got to, I've got to pay for all of that before I get paid. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, even if I work for free, you still have to pay <laughs> a good amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand that side of like the commercial world and that that happens in editorial too, but somehow, like I said, it's mostly exposure bucks somehow over there. Beautiful work. It's very inspiring. Like the work that you see in editorial is like the work that almost sort of like sets the, the stage for what everybody wants to do. But at the end of the day, it somehow it was also the work that like people get paid the least to do, but I don't know if there's like a love hate relationship there. Cause then you get to go like, that's me on the newsstand, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. kind of cool. I never got a gig out of like being like a ton of photos in any given magazine. Yeah. It's not like somebody was like, "Oh, we're gonna hire her." They're like, "Those pancakes look amazing." That was their thought. Not who is this photographer? Exactly. It's like <laughs> they look good. I want to. Yeah, I, I was gonna say. I mean, I haven't been in many magazines. I've been a couple in a, in a couple over here, obviously, because my technique is a little bit different to the. Some people well, are right, different market. Some people are interested in it, and so I've you know been in a few magazines, and it's just like it's like yeah, you didn't get anything from it though. No, no, <laughs> your mom gets but, happy. But, it, but it's like <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got a draw with a few with a few copies of a magazine in it. It's like yes, yeah, I was in that, and it's yeah. Then it might be a case of a, yeah. a post on in, on Instagram stories, like look, people I'm get gonna, excited. They're like, oh, you're in like, a magazine. Yeah, That's and funny. you're just like, yeah, and they still didn't give us any money or whatever, or right, yeah. I managed to yeah. get, a, I managed to get a portion of chips on their expenses. There you go. That's the, that's that. That was the benefit I got from having a, a, a whole day <laughs> taken up by, whatever. Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> well, and like I, my, I think it's it's the main benefit for me is my mom gets to like hand it to someone and be like, this is what my daughter does. Cause otherwise yeah. she's like, I don't know how to explain it <laughs> here. Well, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it took a long time for, for mother to accept that the stuff that I do, as she calls it, the blurry stuff. <laughs> it took her a long time to realize that's the only reason I do what, you know, I'm able to do what I do and make a living you can call this a living um because <laughs> if it was just if i would stay to a normal landscape photography i'm just can... I, i'm just a rubbish photographer just like a lot of the that's you know, like, not fair because so... i licensed your work before well you did that was a sp yes well i suppose and very appreciative of our uh, don't was. call my judgment into question sir <laughs> it was beautiful work <laughs> every artist hates their own work to they do degree. they do we are but our worst critics. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't stand out from the crowd it, it, like I potentially. I did. thought it was beautiful. However, I could see. I think different genres are really hard. All genres are hard to stand yeah. out in. Landscape is particularly difficult. I think it comes down to probably. I don't. I don't know because I'm not a landscape photographer. <laughs> ready? Foot in mouth. Get ready. Go but on. I feel like it's probably partially your post processing, like your you know, how you're taking your photo. And the other part is probably like having a unique perspective, but like how many unique perspectives, I don't know, cause I'm not a landscape photographer, so don't hate on me, but like how many unique perspectives can you have on a like iconic location? Well, yeah, exactly. There's like the big, usually the biggest channel challenge to get a good picture of an iconic location is timing and the ability to get there. Right. Yeah. You know, you know what? I would love to go to Uluru, but it's still going to look like Uluru does in well, the yeah, photos it, that inspired me to go to Uluru. It's like, it's, a, it's, like, it's like that, you know, the sunrise shot at that temple in Cambodia or whatever it is. Was it Angkor Wat or whatever it is? It's like, oh, probably. Yeah, like, yeah the, the hardest part there will be finding the guy to book, keep your place so you can walk up to it and like put your tripod down, press a button. It's the same <laughs> shot as you what, you, what the guy to your, two foot to your left is going to get. Well, it's also good post processing to remove the other people from the shot. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 saw, I, I saw a post the other day about the was it the volcano falls? And was it Yellowstone? Because a certain time oh, of maybe? year that this when the sun comes up. Oh, oh, oh! It's it, it's yeah, it's, it's supposed to be like fire or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 look, yeah. So the, so the spray looks like you know as the water's coming over the top. It looks it looks fire in the golden light of of the dawn. Yep. Uh, hundreds of people there. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah, just no like. Joke. 
<laughs> yeah, but they're all going to be shooting it in exactly the same way. Yeah. yeah. So Slight variances of length and length of uh, lenses, but it, you know, the, a, a, a lot of the stuff out there, well, a lot of it's hobbyist stuff, but yeah, a lot of it out there is just exactly the same. And it's yeah, just, yeah. you know, you, I think, you know, you, we're all, I always say that everybody that starts out in photography, they're, they're looking for a niche. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just thankful I actually finally found one. <laughs> Well, and I think it's hard, you know, it's almost like trying to figure out where you're going to go in life when you're a teenager. The mm. first time you pick up the camera, it's sort of like first year, I don't know, like making your own choices as an adult, like, what do I want to do with my life? And you have to try a bunch of stuff, right, to like kind of figure out where, what like makes things interesting for you. And like, yeah. I was terrified of studio lights and I was told food photography was hard to do. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds terrible. Let me do that. Yeah, but you're the kind of person, Suzanne, that you'll think somebody say, like, that's really hard to do. And you'll be like, right then. Like, <laughs> well, let's just see about that. You are now, like, you are now currently <laughs> learning cinema 4D or whatever it is. That you're well, like, you want to know why I'm doing that. You've probably just gone, sounds like a challenge. Let's, let's look at that. <sighs> it, it's because I like to torture myself. No, so I, uh, <laughs> it's, it is, it, Anyone who's like got into the the 40, like cinema 40 or 3D stuff, like right from the get go, I'm so jealous because <laughs> I'm forever grateful for having so many years of Photoshop and other mm -hmm. software that like to me, it's like super intuitive. But yeah. like the first time you open any of that stuff up, it's so complicated and you're just looking at it and there's, everything's called something weird. And look at these are my notes on like different hotkeys that I'm supposed to use, you know, like, geez, like I'm writing this shit down okay that's where i'm at but um meta and all this nonsense okay i shouldn't say it's nonsense because like in six months we're gonna be like oh we're all in meta but like yeah. it's a 3d world and i was thinking like it's a little bit like the internet when it first started and at first like people were like haha it's kind of silly you know like like i said i was like dialing into a, a friend's bulletin board and like writing i don't know what about like high school bullshit mm -hmm. right like oh you see so and so in class today blah, blah, blah. Bye. <laughs> Are you the original gossip girl? <laughs> no, no, I was not cool. You're or not... nobody knew what I was. No, I mean like, like the... three other people who logged into that computer. <laughs> no, I mean like the like the early early but you know the the program Gossip Girl where it's the online I think it was oh, maybe. Kind of preceded Instagram and all like it obviously yeah. like a, it foretold the future. Did you know? Yeah, I didn't see it. It had Blake so, Lively in it. That's why watch I watched it. it. Well, I'll have, I'll put it on my to-do list. On your so list of stuff to watch. Time. There you go. Yeah. But, but so, but when the internet first came out and it was like, oh, I, you know, I made this website, everybody had like the animated inbox of a mailbox opening. Mm -hmm. And that was like, send me mail. And then over here we had like the flapping American flags, which would totally read differently now. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but then um, I remember I, so I took a class for Photoshop after I graduated college because I graduated a little earlier and then I wanted to and I didn't, but also when I was in college, like uh, most of the professors didn't know what a computer could do mm. age, but <laughs> I did this like dolly animated gif and all the like clocks, the melting clocks were like breathing and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. All the cool stuff I could do. And when I used to visit my brother at college, cause he's older than me, I used to do like total like uh, pixel type illustrations one pixel at a time right. you know like but you think about where all that stuff is now with like mm -hmm. meta and everything it looks horrible it looks chaotic it's mm -hmm. totally like the wild west you hear stories about like kids get on there and all these like predators are like after mm -hmm. them you're like oh my god i remember those days of the internet i mean they're still happening but like yeah. when it was hideous and chaotic and like there's a benefit to like you and me having been there in the beginning because we inherently sort of knew how to build websites. And then mm. you're like, oh, templated sites. Whew, thank God, I don't have to do all that coding anymore. Yeah. You know, like, but we we knew how to do that stuff. And I feel like trying to figure out what elements of being a creative is going to be important on meta and sites like that or mm -hmm. places like that. I think might be helpful to keep yeah. us from like aging out of being a creative in a digital world. And so I'm making a fishbowl in cinema 40. It's, it's a tutorial. So anyone who's done 
this they already they know where i am they've I'm made the fish rocks today. i made some rocks they're hideous so you know where i'm at i'm working on it i'm so in the early stages <laughs> it's awful we've got to start somewhere we've got to start somewhere yeah. No, no it, 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 I mean, I mean the whole metaverse and all that. It, it, it's, it's something that's going to provide, and Putin doesn't blow us all up. Something that's going right. to come. Right. Well, great. Right. Maybe I don't come. need to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> like I said before, we pressed start when it was like on about like, yeah, well, let's just enjoy ourselves. Let's let's not pay them that bill and let's eat that cream cake and and drink that bottle yeah. of whiskey and not not worry about it. But yeah, it, should we survive all this? Then yeah, the, the, this whole metaverse and meta whatever the Mm -hmm. I mean, Facebook's obviously, uh, you know, stolen the whole word, you know, the meta word, even though the, Oh, I know. So clever. A, a lot, a lot of the, crypt, <laughs> a lot of the crypto lot were like the bastard. He's nicked our word. Um, yeah. So, the, I mean, these, this thing's just going to keep on growing and change and, and the whole online 3d animated world is not going to look like the Sims forever. It's going to get way. Yeah. Yeah, way better, and and yeah, there there is there will be a call for more, hopefully more art in that in that yeah, realm. Yeah, like what does that art look like, and what is that experience? I'm just I'm super curious about yeah. it, but also like really cautious because I I left Facebook last year, I think it was, right. and it was like the best thing because it just like Facebook was just nothing but two two types of things. One was like ah politics, and then it was like. I went shopping and I bought this. Which one should I keep? Help me redesign my house. Oh my God, if one more person puts two tile samples up and asks <laughs> for the public to decide how to design their house, I might lose it. I just, I was like, I, there's nothing of value for me here. And not only that, but you can leave Facebook and still keep your chat. So you still have access to talk to your friends and you don't yeah. need to then help them redesign their house. Jesus. <laughs> Just like why? What does our life come to that like you're gonna let the public decide what you're putting in your home? Let let's let's just hope this whole new metaverse is too complicated for the general public to be able to take part in, and then we'll not get we'll not get anti anti Esther and our house redesigns and all and you know that kind of oh, and uh, so much. Oh, it's yeah, it's all, bit, it's all a bit all a bit yeah exactly. And on that it. and on that point. <laughs> I think we'll let you get back to work, Suzanne. Oh, all right. So, all thank right. you, thank yeah. you. It's so also getting really hot. I need to open the door back up. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much for your time this this afternoon for you. Uh, yes. It's, be, it's been lovely to catch up and then do yeah. it in this, in this slightly pu uh, public manner. Um, but before we go, how does the wonderful world find you? Oh, who knows? I'm not on the metaverse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not yet. Oh God. Um, so it's oh, well, SuzanneClements.com. And then you can get to anywhere else from there because I have like links there. But my Instagram is Suzanne C G D because it used to be Suzanne Clements graphic design, but you know, life's change. So Suzanne C G D. But if you if you're like, what the hell did she just say? Just go to SuzanneClements.com yeah, and you'll find go it. Go there and, and all the important stuff is is on there. And one thing I've just noticed that I was gonna bring up this the whole rela re relax rehab oh section. my god yeah the whole i was going to mention that yeah is that is that just you filling in time in covid when there was nothing going on or is that no sir was this no, a, sir. A, an env is this an evolving project that's carrying on and going forward and growing well good, so many good questions but so it's <laughs> relax.rehab is the actual domain name address so there's no dot com or anything it's relax dot rehab mm -hmm. and um so it was i used to do like print promos for my work and send them out right and then everybody you know from covid was like yeah forget working in the office and so it seems like it's a bit difficult to like send out a promo at this point we'll see but so i wanted to still do a promo of some sort and i always like to kind of do a theme and um during the holidays, I had a little bit of downtime to try to produce some personal work, right? So this is like experimenting with different techniques or themes or whatever. And so it's all around like self-care and um, just trying to like disconnect a little bit from the digital world. Yet it is on a website and I'm inviting you to go look at it <laughs> on a website. So, yeah. but yeah, you can kind of cruise through. There's music. Um, I, did, I did notice that. 
And mm-hmm. I like I during did like, production. I did like the line at the bottom saying during production, eighties pop and synth was continuously pumped into the studio, infusing every image with vibrant optimism and dancey vibes. So That's if you right. like your eighties synth pop, then do click on the uh, the music sections on each page. There yeah, is a super very fun. very synthetic and very poppy music on there. <laughs> And very 80s and very ditchy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. We are we are that generation that survived the 80s. Right. We survived. Oh, it's amazing. We survived. We we had all kinds of weird stuff. So out of curiosity, though, not to put you on the spot, but did you have a favorite song? I'm not going to ask you about photos. Who, you know. Um, to be honest, I know how many. You're like I don't know. They, they I don't, all I sound don't like know, an 80s ditchy yeah, synth. The... I don't know. Yeah, I think I think on the first page, I, I think I maybe got five seconds in before I pressed stop. So, um... <laughs> oh, right, that's fair. That's fair. That's my favorite one, but that's okay. That, all right. I'll have to. I'll go back. I'll I'll go back and try. But did you see? I have a teapot in there. I did. Mm-hmm. That, yes. I hope. Hopefully, it wasn't one of them horrible flavored teas. No, that sir. You, that you all seem no, to be. Sir. You American English breakfast, my friend. Fantastic, English breakfast. excellent. It must be your can- mm-hmm. Canadian upbringing. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, because we moved to the states, I don't. My mom and dad never drank tea, but my all my aunts and uncles do, and my still living grandmother does. So right. Yeah. I, I just uh-huh. get I, I just sheep. get I just get upset with when people are like, oh, I love a cup of tea, and then it's like raspberry and vanilla, and you're like, what? <laughs> tea is tea. There's yeah. not. There's what, just what? What, what about London do? Fog or Earl Grey? Is that is that getting into like? Well, just, territory. To me, that's just different brands. You know, there's okay. so many, so many tea companies. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. But I, th- I think it, you know, they, it's just a different flavor. English breakfast like the, is uh, a thing. Well, yeah. I, I mean, even... you know, I, I drink uh, Ring, Rington's breakfast tree, tea. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's a Northeast. Company. Do you do that at supper too? Do you drink tea at supper? I just drink tea all day long, to be honest. <laughs> See, I'm naturally caffeinated, so like you know, for me, a cup of tea could do me in. Right, I oh, know. I'll, I'll on on a good day, I'm probably on about six cups a day. Holy smokes, I'd be vibrating. <laughs> well, I, I don't I, I don't do the whole coffee yeah coffee thing, so yeah, so tea is about as strong as I can get. That's probably just as well, yeah. just as well, yeah. So you you I can usually tell when I'm having a bad day because there's like. Yeah, it's back and forward to the kettle, kettle a f- good few times during the day. <laughs> if I'm having a good day, it's maybe it's only three cups. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, I do green tea in the morning, which is probably not okay. I tried that. I, I tried that once, and it it tastes like grass. Yeah, it, yeah I, I think it might have just been spat straight back into the sink, and like, why? It's supposed to be good for you. Well, that's that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not deba- debating that fact, but it was just like, hmm, <laughs> no. not for me. It is not brown. And and the say you can't put milk in it, so what's the point? Oh, boo! Oh, and wait, quick question. I know you're you're like Suzanne, like it's time to go, but I need to ask somebody who like literally knows, and not some friend of mine here in the U.S. Right? Milk first, milk after. Milk after. Okay, that's what I do. Yes. There you I'm go. Doing it right. Tea bag in. Pour the boiling water over the tea bag. Drain the tea bag. Squish, you know, squished into the side of the mug. So you get all that goodness coming out of it. That's after stirring it for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Straight, you know, like strain that tea bag out. Put your sugar or sweetener in or whatever, you know, or without, you know, whatever your preference is. And then milk. There you go. That's how you okay. do it. I, 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 was, I was known in, in, I was going to say in my younger days, um, not long after university, saying, you make a good cup of tea. And I'm like, great. I've only just started drinking it. So... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I just make it so I can drink it. It there needs it needs at least two sugars in it and milk. I can't do yeah. it without. <laughs> oh, you have educated me so much just now. Fantastic. I did. Uh, <laughs> I, want, I I did watch a, a Twitch stream of, uh, about a month or so ago, and it was a alas in somewhere in Central America. Or anyway, as in Central USA, US. not, not not like yeah. Central America as in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> um forget the terminology is a bit different over um and yeah. and, and, was, and it was like what do i do what do i do and you're just like oh for god's sake and the amount of <laughs> the amount of milk she put in it and you're like what is she doing well we don't know 
you should the, do title, that now. the title of the video <laughs> was like my british friends will absolutely freak at this <laughs> yeah and it was true yes and even even worse i think it was the wife of the american ambassador to the uk a few this is a few oh, years ago no. now put a video on it was thankfully it was a piss take it wasn't serious but <laughs> <laughs> It was like, this is how you make tea in, in, in the UK. And she put the water in the microwave to boil it. <laughs> at, which, <laughs> at which point there was a scream of... Oh, you've gone quiet there, Suzanne? There was a scream of horror from... There was a scream I of horror from... say why! <laughs> everybody in the UK going, you what? <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain to someone who, who isn't among us why that would be bad? Because you boil water in a kettle. But I have since, on the stove most of the time. I, I have discovered that not, not a lot of people have kettles in the US. We don't. There you go. No. Because you don't drink enough tea, that's what it is. I, I had one in college and we used it to make ramen noodles. There you go. That's all I know. So like, I mean, the, the kettle is the most used appliance in the British kitchen. Probably, well, definitely more so than the oven. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Interesting world. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It is. Yeah. Common language, <laughs> very, very different people. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, at the second time of trying, yes, Suzanne, I... thank you again so much. It's been yeah, lovely it's to so catch up. It's so good to see you. And you. Yeah. And you. We'll have to catch up way more often. We should we? get a whole gang together. Oh, that would be a treat, wouldn't it? Yes. Because it'll be like 10 or, 10 or 11 years since we all started. And if we'd all be talking over each other again. Oh, amazing. we would, definitely, yeah. At least I yeah. wouldn't be like two pixels wide though this thing. And auto tune Andy. Oh my god, I gotta let you go. We'll keep going otherwise. <laughs> the dog will be having his legs crossed. I just want out. <laughs> That's right. Right then. Thank you again. I am pressing stop now.